in many ways, the more I've pursued hot up breathing, the more importance I see in the pelvic floor. So I just a couple of weeks ago was exposed to a book written by a Japanese doctor. And it's really on hot up breathing. He calls it Tanden breathing. It's one in the same. And uh, among other things, he goes into the physiology very deeply about this and did a series of experiments on himself, including taking uh, uh, MRIs of himself when he breathes in different ways. It's really quite fascinating. And uh, I, I've read through it once. I want to read through it again before I do more with it. But he introduced in this something I hadn't thought of before, and it's the concept of abdominal pressure. Uh, and uh, if there aren't questions, I'd be happy to talk longer about this than I'm prepared to now. But um, if you think of the lower abdomen as, as like a water-filled balloon, because you have the viscera, you have the guts in there, and you can create more or less pressure just as you would squeeze a balloon. And the pressure in the, in the lower abdomen is really what we want to create. And he doesn't go into this. He doesn't talk so much about the, the neurophysiology about this, what goes on in the mind. But there's, I'm convinced, stimulating the muscle plexes, the, the interconnected muscles in the lower abdomen does incredible things. That's what creates the, the Zen. That's what creates Samadhi. But I never thought about this issue of, of abdominal pressure before. Uh, uh, as I teach about hot breathing, one of the things that I try to avoid is to talk about tension because you don't want to put unnecessary tension in any part of your body. Um, and uh, I've settled on using the term expansion. You want to keep expansion in the lower abdomen. That's whether you breathe abdominally, that's in and out, or hot up breathing where it's out the whole time. I can talk more about that if you wish. Um, but the idea of abdominal pressure is really interesting because if you take this water-filled balloon, what do you do to increase the pressure? So you have just pressure you know, going in all directions of the balloon. Well, one way to do that is to press down on the top. So you can take the top of the balloon. I was going to get a water food balloon, but I thought it'd be a problem if it burst in the middle of this and, uh, and press down. But then you need something to contain it on the bottom. So the, the, the muscles of the top of the abdomen, right under the ribs, that creates, together with gravity, the pressure down. And then the container is the pelvic floor muscles, which should have some tone in them. And this guy, um, yeah, I've got his name right now. I'll look it up and I recommend the book. Um, uh, did studies on, on himself to see what muscles are engaged when he does, in this case, abdominal breathing. And he found that the muscles of the, the, the intercostal muscles, the muscles of the ribs, the flank muscles, and the muscles of the pelvic floor all work in tandem to create pressure, uh, uh, ab abdominal pressure. So, uh, sorry for geeking out on you on that, but to me, this is really fascinating. This is a book I wish I'd seen years ago. But people ask, what is the proper tension of the pelvic floor? So, the best way, and I think I heard this from Tana Roshi, my teacher, is that if you had a picture, you jumped into a cold bathtub or a cold lake or something like that, and what happens to your anal sphincter? Okay, it tightens, and that's the feeling that you want. You don't want too much, you do want too little. And all of these, all this musculature works in tandem. So you can also adjust it by posturally, uh, very subtly when you sit, but you want to have just some tone in the pelvic floor, and that'll help you increase the abdominal pressure. 